What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment. Let's go ahead and jump right on in and start talking about this John Deere Z315E. Now let's start out by talking about where the Z315E falls in the John Deere Zero Turn lineup. Now we know that with John Deere mowers we're going to have these Z3s, Z5s, Z7s, and Z9s with the Z3 being the smallest class of John Deere Zero Turns. Now within that lineup we're going to have seven different models starting with the Z315E. Then we're going to have the Z320E, the Z325E, the Z320M, Z330M, Z320R, Z330R, and last but not least, the Z370R electric. So the Z315E here is going to be our entry level model in the Z3 lineup and in the John Deere Zero Turn lineup. So as we see here on our model number, what we're going to have is the Z indicating zero turn, three indicates that three series. 15, this is gonna be the indicator that this has a Briggs and Stratton engine. And then the one here in this E series is gonna indicate that we have a 42 inch deck. And then the E is going to indicate that we are in the economy level or lowest level of trim level, meaning we're gonna have the least amount of features here on this mower. So what you're gonna see on the John Deere Z315E is gonna be a 20 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. Now, if we look at the top of the engine here, it is gonna be a 20 horsepower labeled John Deere on top. But if we look over here on the left hand side of the engine, you are going to see the Briggs and Stratton sticker just so that you know, this is not a John Deere built engine. It is built by Briggs and Stratton. As far as maintenance goes, nice thing about these zero turn mowers, especially in this Z3 series, everything is very wide open and easy to get to. So starting on the left hand side of the engine, what we're going to see is for one right here, we're going to have our engine oil fill and dipstick. So if you open this up, pull it out, here is going to be the dipstick for that engine. Then if we move over to the side, you are going to have your engine oil drain right here. Now this is nice. It's on a tube that we can simply push that down, pull it out to the rear side of the mower and then be able to drain our oil, then be able to snap that right back up into place. Nice thing about this is you do not need a tool to open up that drain. Now moving a little bit in front of that, we are going to have our first spark plug. Now this is going to be a V-twin engine. So you are going to have two spark plugs, one right here and then one over on the other side as well. Then if we move around here to the front of the engine back on top where that 20 horsepower sticker is, this this is going to be our air filter cover. So we're gonna have two hand nuts right here on top that we can simply open up just like this, take that cover off and then right there is that filter where we can pop that out, change that out, put our cover back on and go right back to work. Now, moving over here to the right hand side, first thing I'd point out is going to be our fuel pump right up here on top. This is gonna be one of those features that if you're starting to have fuel problems with your mower, this is a good place to check. Then moving right along, we are going to have our fuel filter right down here. And then lastly, our oil filter right down here on the right hand side. Now, before we hop on this thing and talk about the operator station, let's talk a little bit about the seat. So on the Z315E, what you're going to have is an 18 inch high back seat. You are not going to have the armrest on this seat. So that is just one of the small features that I'm talking about that you will be missing out on with the Z315E. So if armrests are not a big deal for you, then you are good to go with the Z315E. Now you're also on this seat going to have a dual spring suspension system underneath this seat to add to that ride quality. And then you're going to have these nice sides here that are going to kind of bow out and help to keep you in this mower and then you're also going to have that thick cushioning there on the bottom as well as a drain hole in this seat so if it does happen to rain like it did this morning here you will have that drain out on this seat as well now whenever i hop onto this mower one thing that is nice about the zero turn mowers is that you are going to have your lever to be able to step up here on the deck get turned around and be able to sit down comfortably on this mower so if mobility issues are something for you What's nice about the Z3 series is they are still low enough to the ground and you do have your handles here that you can hold on to that it makes it pretty easy to get onto this mower. But if you do need a little bit more reach out to the side, I do have a video over all of the attachments that it can go for this Z3 mower. So make sure to check that out as you'll see that side step along with all the other attachments for these mowers. Now, as far as all of the things here in the operator station, we'll just start over here on the left-hand side. Not really in the operator station, but close is going to be your gas fill over here. Now, this is gonna be a large opening here over on the side with that tethered lid that we can open up right there. That is gonna be a three gallon tank. So you're gonna have plenty of fuel to make sure get that mowing done that you need to do. Then moving up in front of the fuel tank is going to be your beverage holder here. Then as we move forward, the next thing we're gonna run into on our left-hand side is going to be 
our control lever. Now, of course, you are gonna have one of these on both sides. These are what control your two rear wheels and all of the driving functions of this mower. So if you are not familiar with a zero turn and how it functions, these levers are basically your controls for each one of your back wheels, but they are independent controls, meaning that your left lever controls your left back wheel, your right controller controls your right back wheel. So if we wanted to go forward, we would push both levers forward at the same time. If we wanted to go backwards, we'd pull both levers back at the same time. Then if we need to make those turns, this is just like if you're riding a bike. So if you think about whenever you're riding a bicycle, if you need to turn to the left, you are gonna turn your hands like this. Same thing here with your zero turn. Then if you need to turn to the right on a bicycle, you would turn your hands like this. So it's the same thing once again here on this zero turn. We're gonna push forward and pull back to make that right hand turn. One thing about the control levers on this machine is not only are they your control levers, but these are also going to act as your parking brake on this mower. So once we put these handles out, this is going to actuate two buttons on this mower that are tucked underneath your fender panels here that are going to lock in your parking brake. So a lot of times on other mowers, you'll have parking brakes that either are done by your foot or by hand, but this one is done right here at your lever. So as soon as you pull these into drive, it's going to disengage your parking brake. As soon as we push them out, it's going to re-engage that parking brake. Now, moving right in front of our control lever, you're gonna notice two bolts on either side right here on these. These are going to be for our tracking control. So that is what's going to adjust how far these levers are able to go forward. Sometimes these get a little bit out of whack, but once again, I do have a video showing how to adjust this. So if you do have that issue where your levers are not quite acting as they're supposed to, make sure to check that video out as well. Now, moving over to the right-hand side, when we're looking at our controls, your right hand side is going to be your main center here for your control so what we're going to have is our height of cut adjustment right here this yellow knob so what we're going to do is push in on our foot pedal turn this knob to select that height that is going to go from one and a quarter inches up to four and a half inches in those quarter inch increments. Then once we let off of that pedal, that is going to lower that deck down to the height that you've selected. Right above that is going to be our PTO engagement or our blade engagement. This is just gonna be a simple pop button that we pull up for on, push down for off. Then next to that is going to be your hour meter. So you are gonna have an hour meter here on the machine. So if you're wanting to track those hours to do those service things that we talked about before at the back here, you are going to have that hour meter right here on board. Then right behind that we are going to have our single lever choke and throttle lever now a lot of times on other mowers what you're going to see is a separate lever for your choke but on the z315e you're going to have just one lever that is going to have a choke position all the way forward and then once we let off of that it's going to go back so right here is going to be choke it's going to slowly go back then here is going to be our full throttle position all the way down to our slow throttle then right next to that is going to be our key slot position so what you're going to see here is a stop a light position a run position and a start position. Now on this mower specifically, on the Z315E, you are not going to have any lights that are going to come standard on this mower, but you can add those. So if you do add those lights to your mower, you actually already have that switch right here on board on your key switch. And then also back behind all of our controls over here, we are gonna have this storage panel. And one thing that is nice that you're gonna have in this storage panel, this tool that comes right on board here. Now this is going to be a 13 millimeter socket and it is gonna be used for multiple different places on this machine. For instance, on our control levers, these are actually going to be adjustable control levers where we can adjust the, their positioning either more forward, more backward, straight up and down, and we can also adjust them up or down to fit those different operators and all of those adjustments can be done with this tool using it right here on these two nuts and then also if we need to adjust that tracking that we were talking about you do not have to go find a tool for that you actually have it right here on board it is going to fit right in on these two tracking bolts here now let's talk just a little bit about what you're going to see underneath the seat on these machines so when we raise that seat up it will go all the way forward and then once we're underneath some of the things that we're going to see for one is going to be your translucent fuel tank so this is going to to be how you see how much fuel is in your mower. There is not a gauge or anything on the mower other than this being translucent to where you can see 
your fuel levels. Then right in front of that, we are going to have a fuse panel. So right here is going to be your fuse panel for the mower. And right in front of that is going to be our battery. So very nice that it is underneath the seat. And we're also going to have our service interval chart right here on the bottom side of the seat telling us when we need to do those different operations. And then also we're going to have our seat adjustment. So you can adjust this seat either backwards or forwards. But how we're going to do it is just by loosening this right here and then we can take this knob off move that seat up to the next notch and then tighten that back down and then there we can change the position of our seat now another thing here that is actually going to be not necessarily underneath the seat but still on the underside of the mower is going to be our hydrostatic drives these are going to be the hydro gear easy t-c transaxles on this machine so these are going to produce a traveling speed of seven mile per hour and this is going to be either going forward or backward now let's talk about our frame and our mower deck now on the frame as of 2023 the z3s went through a redesign so you're now going to have a lot more sturdy beefier frame on these mowers so starting at the front what you're going to see is two and a half by two inch steel tubing across the front from your front wheel to your other front wheel. Then running from the front of the mower to the back, you're gonna have one and a half inch by two inch steel tubing running all the way out the rear of the mower. So this is gonna add to the durability of this mower, also add to the strength overall and add to the longevity in the life of this mower. Now, whenever we're talking about the mower deck on this machine, what you're gonna have is a 42 inch XL deep mower deck. So this is gonna be a 42 inch cut. That will be the only option and size of deck on the John Deere Z315E. So it will have two mower blades underneath it, which also means two spindles that we need to take care of. Nice thing is, is that on this deck, you are gonna have those flip up spindle covers. So make it very easy to get to those grease points right here on top with those flip up covers. Now, one thing that it does say on top of the covers here is it's gonna give you a little bit of information. One is it's gonna give you a picture of a grease gun and an arrow showing you right where that grease point is going to be. It's also going to tell you use air, not water. So whenever we're talking about cleaning off these mowers, we want to use the least amount of water as possible. That way we're not giving this mower the chance to have those issues with rust and other types of corrosion. So whenever you're going to clean off this mower, break out that air compressor or that leaf lower and make sure to get these nice and clean. Now, there is a little bit of a contradiction to that whenever you see the washout port that is on this deck. Now, this is for the underside of the deck. So whenever we're going to clean that underside, if we've been in those muddy situations or there's super thick, wet grass situations, we may need to use a little bit of water to get off some of that debris. So you have this washout port here where you can hook up that hose, lower that mower to the ground if you're on a concrete or asphalt surface, turn that hose on, then turn the mower and the blades on let that wash underneath and churn that water and really get that clean but then we want to do a good job of blowing air underneath this to make sure and get everything dry so that we are avoiding that rust and corrosion now on this deck this is going to be a single piece of forged 12 gauge steel and then you are going to have your anti-scalping wheels on the front on both sides also you are going to have that large opening over on the right hand side with that spring loaded discharge chute and the nice thing too with this deck is that you are going to have the option to add a mulching kit to this mower or you can also add a bagger kit and i have videos showing these as well on our other channel 247parts.com so make sure to go check those out now lastly let's talk dimensions warranty and price so whenever we are talking about dimensions of this mower how long it is how wide it is are all going to be crucial to making sure that you can get this mower in those places that you need to. So we're gonna have an overall length of 75.4 inches. Then we're gonna have an overall width with the discharge chute in the down position of 50.4 inches wide at the widest point. But if you have it up and in a transport mode like we have it right now, then you're gonna be looking at 46.5 inches wide. And as far as height goes, about the tallest point on this mower is going to be the tip of your handles when they're in the out position. So you're gonna be at about 46. 0.5 inches whenever these are out if you're looking at height and then weight wise we're looking at 554 pounds so don't be trying to muscle this thing around too much by yourself if you have to do so now whenever we're talking about the warranty on these machines what we're going to be looking at is a three-year 200 hour warranty on this machine that is going to be a bumper to bumper warranty that covers all of those different components such as your engine transmission and any manufacturer defects now these aren't going to cover you those things that are going to be your normal wear items such things as belts blades tires, things 
like that. But if you do have an issue with this machine, make sure that you are taking advantage of that warranty as it is there to help protect you. Now, price-wise on this machine, if we just go and look at deer.com, you are gonna see a list price starting at around $31.99. But I always encourage you to make sure if you are looking into these mowers, make sure you go to your local dealership or maybe that Lowe's or Home Depot, look for this mower. See if you happen to have any discounts that you qualify for, if there are any incentive programs on this mower to make sure that you get the best price when you are looking at making this purchase. So guys, I hope this video helped you out. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, we just ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also guys, if you're looking for any John Deere parts at all, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always guys, Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.